Hey everyone, welcome to a whole new series on React. So this is the first episode of the React Intermediate series. Uh, it's a continuation from the previous series. In the previous series, we took, um, you know, very loosely, we looked at how to build a React app. We understood like the different concepts. There's routing, um, there's the components and styling and all that stuff. And this uh, series is where it all comes together. So I've uh, taken the best bits of the previous uh, season uh, and basically, um, you know, taken out the stuff I don't like, uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, if you have uh, seen that, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So I've taken out the bits that I don't like and I've added on the bits I do like. So to improve and, you know, make uh, React development a better experience overall. So uh, over here, what I'm going to do is before we actually getting into any code, I'm going to introduce you guys to the Fronto template. I'm going to go a little bit deep dive. I'm going to talk to you guys about what it uh, what it has, what you know, what it does, what's the philosophy behind it, uh, and why you should adopt it. Um, so you know, this is um, you know based on a lot of work of uh, you know working with React projects, and then you know having the frustration of you know the inconsistencies on in how you set up projects, and you know like even though the, there are some out there, but they never actually um, you know are made to my liking. So basically, I created my own. Uh, starter kit, if you will. And, you know, the idea is this is going to evolve into a, uh, a, a fully fledged framework. Uh, so what do I mean by a fully fledged framework? So this is first of all, starting off with a template, the template, I feel kind of like sets the foundation sets the stage of, you know, kind of like how the the whole life cycle of the front end react application is going to be so you can uh, clone this template, and then basically, you can get started building react projects very quickly. Um, so as I mentioned, we're not going to code, but I'm going to walk you through the feature set of um, the Fronto uh, template over here. Uh, so, uh, you know, later I'll have CLIs and how to integrate with Rails, how to great integrate with Elixir apps and Phoenix and all that stuff. So the idea is that, you know, the front end is now completely decoupled from the back end. And what that means is, um, you know, once you build this, it runs pretty much statically, statically uh, on its own. Like you can just put this... Uh, behind Nginx and when the request hits uh, Nginx just serves the pages and then your app is booted. So technically you don't even need a backend but you know it wouldn't be very useful because you wouldn't have any data. Um, so basically now you know any backend that we're doing is just focused on delivering business logic and data and all that stuff. So um, I'm gonna walk you guys through some of the feature set that's in here. Uh, so first of all let's take a look at the layout over here. Uh, the layout, this is this is what you are seeing. I'm going to switch to the browser in a minute. And this is what you're looking at. So if I head over here, you'll see the sidebar and then a post. So I admit I should have a better starting page than this. Uh, but for now, you know, like it works. So I just want to, you know, have something here to show you guys that it actually works. So this is kind of like a, a really bad hello world. Um, it'll improve later on, but I, so I just want to move on to talk about, um, you know, like what, what this code has. So you can see here that, um, there is this thing called style name. So this is, um, you know, this is based on something, uh, which is quite important. Um, so CSS modules is now uh, going to be deprecated. Um, so basically doing things using, um, uh, you know, CSS modules, the old version, it's no longer being, being developed. If you look at the code base, the developer of uh, CSS modules recommend using this solution instead. And what this is, is, is a, um, it's a Babel plugin for CSS modules. Essentially, that's what it is. So a lot of the work happens in compile time. So performance wise, things are a lot better by using this solution here. So I'm going to show you guys uh, in the package.json uh, which one that is. So if you can see here, um, Babel plugin React CSS module. So this is the one we're using. This is the new one. This is the one currently being developed uh, by the same developer as CSS modules. So this is the next progression. So we're adopting that. That's number one. So performance for CSS styles are going to be a lot better. Uh, let's take a look at the SAS. So here now you can just write dot sidebar. You can do underscores and, not, and whatnot. And essentially now the global styles is separate from local styles. So if you have some global class, you can add it as class name. And if you have some local, so over here I imported application.sass, uh, style name sidebar. So that's why we have the red uh, background uh, that you saw 
uh, over here and the blue background for the content area. Um, so it can do a lot more, but essentially that's kind of like the gist of React, uh, of the, you know, the Babel uh, plugin, uh, CSS modules. Performance wise, it's going to be a lot better. And if you want to take a look at how, how much better it is, you can take a look at the GitHub page. I'm going to have a link. Um, and you can take a look at, at that, at how much improvement it is over uh, just using the raw CSS modules. All right, so uh, let's take a look at something else over here. Um, so let's take a look at the pages. So there's something interesting going on in the pages. So right now you can see that we have a post page. Uh, uh, granted, there's nothing really important going on here. It's just posts, basically. Um, so you can see here the pages is being rendered and you can see the post over here is being rendered from this page here. Um, so I just want to take a uh, talk a little bit about uh, code splitting. So in the previous uh, series, I never talked about code splitting because, you know, it was a bit of a challenge and I don't want to bore you guys with the detail of setting up the code splitting. So right out of the, right out of the gate, this template offers code splitting. And as you build, as we build the app, uh, you're going to learn how to, you know, properly structure your app so that code splitting actually works really well. Uh, so we're going to be covering all of that stuff uh, in this series here. So hope you are excited about that. Um, there's also a loading component here. Uh, and so basically the library I'm using uh, for uh, code splitting that's helping with code splitting is on top of just using Webpack is the React loadable library here. And this is basically the one that does most of the heavy lifting in terms of the code splitting stuff. So you can see here, I'm doing dynamic import uh, and I'm calling it, calling it a segment. Uh, so, uh, you know, essentially uh, the idea is you can have multiple pages and each page is its own chunk and basically Webpack will work out, um, you know, which chunks go where and when to call whichever chunk. So that's all kind of like set up for you. You don't have to really do much. It's all already done. However, if you are curious about how, um, you know, how code splitting and how Webpack is set up, you can customize it as well. So over here we have the basic uh, setup in terms of this is the production settings and then we have the development settings as well. Uh, then we have the entry output. So it's just a standard uh, Webpack stuff. So now I've split it up. So it makes more sense, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, it, you can go in and customize it. Um, but, you know, if you take a look at why it like, for example, development, you understand that this is being used for development purposes. Production is the production build. So it makes sense. And whatever is common between the two of them are shared in here. Um, there's also the routes file. So basically here is where you would define all your routes. So there's no more, um, you know, JSX routes. It's all just pure JavaScript objects. Uh, so we have an array here and then we can define routes. And later on, we'll get into more how the routes are defined, like the more advanced routes, like nested routes and passing parameters and all that fancy stuff. Um, and the router we're using here is called router five. I already mentioned this in the lab report 2018, uh, that we used to kick off the year with. Uh, so if you're curious about that, take a look at that and you'll see, um, you know, the, uh, introduction to react five and uh, sorry, the router five and, and why we're using it, uh, and all that stuff. So I'll have links, uh, in the description below as well. So check that out. Um, then there's a template. Uh, so this is a basic template and, uh, you know, feel free to, when you do clone the project, feel free to come and customize this uh, as you like. Uh, so the one thing that it doesn't cover yet is uh, server-side rendering. And I'm still looking for a good solution for doing server-side rendering. But for everything else, it, this is pretty much the bee's knees. It's pretty much the best thing out there that I can see. Um, so as you can see here, post CSS is built in. Uh, SAS is built in. So if you like SAS, you'll love this. Uh, and, you know, Babel, we have the latest Babel installed. Uh, so it's still even just like seven beta. Uh, so, you know, just to show you guys that, you know, this is like the structure and I've found that it works. And how do I know that it works? Not just for like one project and one little experiment. So I built, um, you know, multiple apps. By multiple, I mean like three in the span of the last, three months, basically one app every month uh, using this template. And it has, um, you know, it has worked out really, really well. Um, you know, I was able to, you know, convert all my old older projects um, over to using this setup. And, you know, it, I'm, I've been very happy with it. And my clients 
whom are paying me money are really happy with it. You know, it, like they look at it, it makes sense. They can jump in and they can dig into the code and they can continue development. Um, you know, like right away. So that's kind of like the idea as well. It's like when you open up a project, it's the same directory structure. Uh, it's following uh, JS standard structure, like with the SRC and all that stuff. So, you know, it makes things quite simple. Uh, on top of that, you know, like I've also learned on how to simplify some of the components we have. Um, you know, so for now, this is just an example uh component here so when you clone the project you get everything that i that you're looking at over here and then you can just customize as you need so the first order of business um for um for what we're going to do in this series is we're going to convert the old project right so uh the old project is you know kind of like like it's based off like it's just React. We just really want to focus on React and, you know, a bit of routing and a bit of styling using CSS modules. But essentially, we didn't really cover um, conventions and, like, how we're going to structure stores and, you know, how we handle, like, a lot of the things have not been taken care of. You know, we didn't discuss that. And the, the, the sole purpose was so that um, you could focus on React and how to build components and how to build apps with React. But now, you know, we need to take it a little bit further and we need to make it production ready. Like, for example, if you run Yarn Build with this template, you'll be able to ship it off, uh, ship off the code and all that stuff. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about all that in, in this season uh, as well. Like, how do you structure your code? How do you write clean code and testing and, you know, all that fancy stuff that we need to cover, um, you know, in a real life development environment uh, when you work in a company and you have other people working with you you want things to be consistent and you want things to be repeatable um, and then you want things to be like understood like you know when you sh sh uh, give a piece of code to someone they can take it they can understand this oh i know this is the front door template okay i get it yeah great i had to learn it once and now i can do it over and over again um so yeah there are other templates out there and that works for them but you know I need to build things. I need to get stuff shipped fast and it needs to be consistent. I need to be able to explain it to other people. Um, you know, it's everything that I'm doing is based on those values. It's like consistency, um, stability. Uh, so, you know, like having things repeatable uh, so that, you know, I can basically show it to someone and then it still looks the same. Even, the, even though underneath, under the hood, things are different. Things are getting better, but the structure is the same. So that's kind of the philosophy behind this template. Um, so yeah, uh, the first order of business is we're going to need to convert the old project, uh, the, the invoiced UI. So if I head over here, uh, we have invoice UI and this is, you know, its own kind of structure and I don't want to use this. So what I'm going to do um, is we're going to take this apart. And I'm going to convert uh, file by file. So I'll show you guys how to, you know, do one at a time. And then basically, once we get into the challenges, uh, I'll help you guys work out, you know, how the different challenges, like how do you convert the CSS modules from what we were using before to something new, something that we're, it's more optimized, it's faster uh, and all that stuff. And how do we like change like the, you know, the structure and basically everything uh, in order to get it working with Fronto template. Uh, so the project is not that big. It's not that complicated that it would be difficult to do. So we'll, I'm going to do it on screen with you guys. And any part that's been going to be repetitive, I'm just going to leave it out. Um, and then, you know, I'm sure you guys can figure it out if it's repetition of something we already covered. All right. So um, the other thing we're going to do is... Um, the idea of Fronto is to be able to integrate with any kind of project. So what I'm going to do is once we've converted the project into um, a Fronto template uh, project, I'm also going to move it into the Rails app. So basically, there's going to be one repository. And the whole reason why is to, to, so that you know the overhead of managing code base is going to be uh, much lesser when you have just one code base. Uh, so that's kind of like the reason why. And I'll show you guys how it should, t you know, how it integrates with Rails. There's very minimal touch point. The idea is the Rails app handles the API still, focuses on that, focuses on the business logic and the, and the API and the JSON and all that stuff. And the Fronto template kind of takes over the assets pipeline, if you will. It's basically where we disconnected, where we removed the whole assets pipeline. Um, Fronto, uh, you know, Fronto template takes over and basically allows us to 
um, build projects, build front end projects for that. Like, you know, just, you know, basically output it to public and then how do you integrate it with Nginx and, and all that stuff. So basically, you know, once you build everything out, as I mentioned, uh, things can be quite, you know, served quite statically. So it can just be served purely from Nginx, basically. Um, so I've talked a lot in this episode. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to, um, in the next episode, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start setting up the uh, directory structure, um, you know, where um, the assets should live and why. I'm going to explain a little bit as to why the assets should live in certain directories and stuff like that. Um, and then hopefully, um, you know, once we're done with that, like development and, and like the life cycle of building features and stuff is going to be a lot easier because it's in one, uh, it's in one project, it's in one directory. So without any further ado, I hope you guys understood everything I talked about. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will be happy to answer them. Uh, with that, I want to wrap it up and I will see you guys in the next episode.